Good afternoon, people of Manchester. I'm bringing you a message today concerning the impending second referenda that is going to be possibly imposed upon you if the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has his way. For those who like confirmation of this, if you look into the press uh, today, uh, the Telegraph states Jeremy Corbyn is backing a second referendum. And in the Daily Express, it mentions a warning that this will probably re uh, realise or lead to quite considerable civil unrest. Uh, the warning that I'm delivering to you today is that the British government are trying to create a situation of a civil war in this country. They are setting the levers against the Remainers, so it's no longer anything to do with religion. It's not anything to do with race. It's not anything to do with immigration policy. It's a simple schism that they're trying to create by splitting the country down the middle. Now, Theresa May um, is a traitor. She is a traitor to the sovereign, and she is a traitor to the people. And by the sovereign, I don't mean the House of Windsor. I mean the people with a small s who are the sovereign people who are responsible for the country. Now, the major implications of this are that there are 650 MPs in Westminster Parliament. The vast majority of them have never wished to leave the European Union. The problem therefore stems that you have so-called 650 elected individuals there who are traitors to the people. And they're traitors in the fact that no, ma no matter what, whether you voted to leave in June 2016, or whether you voted to remain, the fact of the matter is they are trying now to deliberately overturn a democratic principle, which is once a decision has been given or put to a referendum, then it should be abided to. The problems, though, reach and extend far greater than this, and how they uh, extend far greater is the fact that Theresa May and her corrupt and criminal treasonous government are all responsible for the objective of keeping you in the European Union, not out of it. And the reason for that is they want a federal nation state of a European Grand Federal Union. They do not want nationality and they do not want any individuals to any individual nation states leaving. For those who are in the Remain uh, category, ask yourself this. How come the European Union, the Club of Rome, have never ever allowed a nation state to withdraw? The French, many of you may not realize, voted to leave. And the Greeks. The... And the Greeks. So we just said the, said the Greeks, yep. Yeah. The French um, had a referendum and they decided to leave. The Dutch, the same. The Irish, the same. Look what happened to them. Forced into a second referendum, which miraculously turned into a Remain vote. When the Spanish and the Portuguese demanded a referendum, it was scheduled and then it was abandoned. So, the European Union, the Club of Rome, have never ever allowed a nation state to withdraw once they were into the toxic club of Rome. And for all those who are wishing to remain, Apart from the emotional attachment to the pretty flag with the nice stars on it, I ask you, what, what benefits has the European Union membership actually bequeathed to you since 1973? I suspect not much. Let's look though a little bit further afield and see the ama amazing economic miracle that has been gifted, which is a German word for poison, which has been gifted to the other member states, shall we, to see how economically vibrant they are. Well, we have Greece, which is absolutely bankrupt. We have Italy, which is bankrupt and is now being controlled by Mario Draghi and the Goldman Sachs gang. You have Spain, bankrupt. You have Portugal, bankrupt. You have Ireland, bankrupt, who had to be bailed out uh, with that uh, Brussels bailout in, uh, I think it was 2009. You have France, where the Yellow Vest movement against Emmanuel Macron is building every day because the French economy is on its knees with over 50 to 60 percent general taxation as the equivalent of PAYE or if you're owning your own business and the cost of living going through the roof 
this year. So, I ask you, all those people who might decide or might long to remain in the European Union, please tell me, as I say, apart from the, the kilo, which they gave to us, and apart from the, uh, the pretty flag, there hasn't been many economic benefits that they've bestowed upon us. And for all of those who are fearful that once we leave, as I hope we certainly do, in March, the Armageddon doom-mongers that say the economic uh, catastrophe will surely arrive because we are no longer in the club. Well, two things. Who is or who are the biggest single trading partners with the European Union? Um, and they're certainly not any member country within the European Union. The biggest trading partner and pick up any item that you get from Argos or buy from Amazon, uh, even the toys in the McDonald's food packages, are all made by a member or an organization or a country which is not within the European Union, and that country is China. So China is the biggest single exporter or importer into the European Union, and they are not part of the club, and they seem to be doing very, very well. Thank you. The second largest um, trading member for the European Union is the United States, and they don't have tariff agreements, and they don't have exchange rate mechanisms. So, for all the scaremongers who come and try and say to you there will be economic Armageddon, I would suggest to you that what they're doing is they are taking the mickey, and what they are, are deliberately doing is setting up the agenda for uh, Theresa May, and the Theresa May agenda has been from day one to ensure that the United Kingdom stays within the European Union Club. That being said, you have to question the integrity of Theresa May. You have